Good day. In this lecture, we talk about uh, three phase uh, induction motors. Now, the key concepts uh, to be covered uh, we uh, will talk about the uh, principle of operation and then we will talk about what is the definition of slip, voltage, and frequency included in the induced in the rotors, all right? and then the uh, how the active power flow takes place, and general rules of thumb about induction motor torque, uh, speed curve, effect of uh, rotor resistance and uh, reduced voltage uh, operation. So those are the things that we are going to cover. <coughs> now the basic uh, operating principle, if you uh, is, uh, imagine a uh, conducting uh, ladder, moving magnet cutting across a conducting ladder pulls the ladder along its direction of travel. So uh, this is a moving magnet which is moved uh, over a, a conducting ladder and then these uh, crossbars are all conducting so what happens basically is because of the varying uh, magnetic field over these uh, crossbars there will be a induced current in the crossbars and then uh, that current will be subjected to a force in the direction of traverse so uh, the ladder if it is free to move if the force is high enough will start moving with the magnet but not quite at the same speed so that is the important uh, phenomena now if we look at a typical uh, state of a three-phase uh, induction motor uh, this is a very basic elementary two-pole stator having terminals A, B, C connected to a three-phase uh, source which is not shown. These are the supply terminals and what you got is uh, the same winding is wound across the opposite uh, poles around the opposite poles and there are three of them three pairs and the, all six poles are equally spaced around the circumference of the stator. So this is how the state of winding is done. How could we do the rotor? There are two ways. One is, probably I'll take this one first. One is the typical wound rotor where you get a uh, winding uh, on the rotor and then there are three slip rings. There are three windings equally spaced just like the stator uh, uh, wound around the rotor. Uh, and terminals of three, those three windings are taken out through slip rings. Uh, and it is star connected. Because of that, you get only three terminals. So you need only three uh, supply points which are taken out from three slip rings. And the squirrel cage rotor is uh, much more uh, simple where you get it is more like a, a, a cage of a squirrel with these conductor bars and then short circuit rings on either side of the uh, conducting bars consists of a laminated cylindrical core having parallel slots in its outer periphery commonly used simple and robust construction. So this is submerged inside this rotor iron in rings in short circuiting rings and then copper bars in the iron conductor and this is the rotor shaft. So that's the squirrel cage rotor. A little bit of animation. When the stator is supplied from the three phase the resultant magnetic field because there are three sinusoidal signals which are 120 electrical degrees apart uh, supplying the state of winding uh, so they are time varying uh, voltage quantities which will create time varying current quantities inside the 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 state of winding three state of windings and then these time varying current quantities will produce time varying magnetic field three time varying magnetic fields but these three magnetic fields when you work out the um, resultant it's possible to mathematically show that the resultant magnetic field rotates 
around the state circumference in within inside the air gap at a certain frequency what is that frequency we will talk about it later so when that happens when that rotation of the uh, magnetic field state of magnetic field takes place that rotating magnetic field just like the magnet we moved over the um, conducting ladder that magnetic field will induce rotor currents and because of that currents will start flowing in the rotor conductors because of those currents rotor conductors will be subjected to a force which will initiate the motion if I read this one the state of winding of an AC induction motor are distributed around the stator to produce roughly sinusoidal distribution when the three phase AC voltages are applied to the stator windings a rotating magnetic field is produced that's what I said and the rotor of an induction motor also consists of windings or more often a copper squirrel cage uh, embedded within iron laminate laminates only the iron laminates are shown and electric current is induced in the rotor bars which also produce a magnetic field <laughs> then the rotating magnetic field of the stator drags the rotor around the rotor does not quite keep up with the rotating magnetic field of the stator it falls behind or slips as the field rotates just like the ladder in this animation for every time the magnetic field rotates the rotor only makes three quarters of a turn so that is how the animation has been done if you follow one of the bright green or red teeth with the mouse you will notice it change color as it falls behind the rotating field the slip has been greatly exaggerated to enable visualization of this concept a real induction mode only slips a few percent so now let us look at some mathematics synchronous speed now this is the speed at which the stator magnetic field will rotate speed of rotating magnetic field depends on the frequency of the supply source so it is dependent on the supply frequency and also the number of uh, number of uh, poles on the state now the synchronous speed therefore is defined as ns is the synchronous speed is equal to 120 times f is the frequency divided by p is the number of poles and frequency f is in hertz the definition slip the slip speed slip is the speed difference between the state magnetic field and rotor magnetic field expressed as per unit oh, sorry uh, so this is the uh, state magnetic field the speed of this state magnetic field this is the speed of the rotor magnetic field divided by ns the synchronous speed gives us the slip so that's the other relationship and then i'm just demonstrating here calculation of synchronous speed and slip for an induction motor how could you do that if it is a four pole 60 hertz machine rotating at a speed of 1725 rpm synchronous speed is 120 f divided by p which is 120 into 60 divided by 4 which is 1800 rpm therefore the slip is 1800 minus 1725 divided by 1800 which is 0 0.0416 roughly it is 4.1 percent similarly a 
four pole 60 hertz machine rotating at a speed of uh, 1780 rpm will result in 0.111 slip which is like 1.1 percent now the voltage and frequency induced in the rotor f2 is the slip times f the voltage E2 is slip times EOC. What is F2? F2 is the frequency of voltage and current in the rotor. So, as you can see, the induced uh, frequency, sorry, the voltage uh, frequency of the induced voltage in the rotor does not have the same frequency as the supply. It is slightly less and F is the supply frequency, 50 hertz in most cases. And then E2, the voltage induced in the rotor at slip S. So E2 is the voltage induced in the rotor with the slip S and EOC is the open circuit voltage induced in locked rotor. When the, lo when the rotor is at standstill, you can imagine that it is more like a three-phase transformer with a primary and a secondary because there are two uh, sets of three phase windings one in the stator and one in the rotor and they don't move with respect to each other so it's like a transformer so open circuit voltage induced in a locked rotor so all these equations follow from Faraday's law and then have the power flow takes place. Now active power is supplied through the stator windings into the stator and then there is I squared R losses and iron loss in the stator winding and the stator core and then through the air gap through this uh, process of interaction of the rotor magnetic field and the stator magnetic field power is active power is supplied to the rotor and then in the rotor there is <coughs> again I squared R losses and then because of the torque there is a <coughs> mechanical power excuse me mechanical power going out but at the same time some of the mechanical power will be lost in the as the frictional losses in the bearings and the wind due to the wind resistance windage and friction loss and finally you can get shaft power which is denoted as PL. So if you look at some of the equations here the electric power input is of course as we know it's square root 3 times E times I cos theta. PE is the electrical input power and then PJS stands for stator joule loss that's the stator power loss. PF is flux loss or the iron loss that is lost as due to the eddy currents. PJR rotor loss is S times PR slip times the active power supplied to the rotor is the losses in the rotor and then PM the mechanical power is equal to PR minus PJR that is the rest which is 1 minus s times pr mechanical power supplied to the sorry the uh, active power supplied to the rotor and then the torque motor torque is 9.55 times pm motor torque power mechanical power divided by n the speed therefore the efficiency finally becomes the useful power output which is PL divided by electrical power input PE. So this is a quick overview about power flow. How could you estimate the currents in induction motor? I the full load current can be found as 600 pH divided by E where 
pH is the output power in horsepower. This is in horsepower. E is the rated voltage and 600 is an empirical constant. You can read the same thing in the textbook. And then the torque speed curve book of an induction motor varies with the speed. So this is how the typical torque speed curve looks like. Now at the beginning or when it is zero speed which is the locked rotor situation locked rotor torque is about 1.5 times the T where T is the nominal torque or the rated torque. Now, rated torque is the torque that the machine usually is designed to operate at or withstand, overcome, drive. right? And when you start from zero speed you start with the locked torque road torque but there is a certain range up to maybe when it comes to 20 percent of the speed the torque becomes passed by a minimum local minimum point and then the torque starts increasing and at about 80 percent of the nominal speed or the synchronous speed not the nominal speed 80 percent of the synchronous speed the torque reaches a maximum which is called the breakdown torque and then it starts dropping again and finally settles down at full load which is the usual normal operating point. Breakdown torque therefore is the maximum torque developed by the machine. Pull up torque the maximum torque developed by the machine sorry the minimum torque developed by the machine while accelerating from rest to break down torque. So that's a little bit about torque speed curve. And then the what is the effect of rotor resistance. Now in a squirrel cage rotor, rotor resistance you can't change it. It's constant rotor but with the temperature it changes. That is simply because resistance of any material changes with the temperature. Because of that it increases with temperature. Therefore, in other words, as the load increases, the rotor resistance increases in case of a squirrel cage uh, induction motor. And what happens or what is the effect of high rotor resistance? When the rotor resistance is high, the starting torque will be high and the starting current will be low because of the high rotor resistance. But the speed will rapidly fall off with increasing load and the I squared R loss will be high. More I squared R loss or the internal uh, losses due to internal rotor resistance will be high because of the high uh, rotor resistance and the efficiency therefore will be low. Whereas low rotor resistance preferable for running conditions and the speed drop will be less with increasing load so it can maintain pretty much the same speed or slight drop will take place as the load increases and obviously efficiency will be high because of the less low I squared R losses. Now because of this for a wound rotor motor it is possible to have a start up circuit which is like this. We, the, the rotor winding is taken out through these three slip rings and then uh, what we've got here is three star connected variable resistors and the resist three uh, resistors have equal uh, tapping points with equal magnitude so that you can uh, increase or de change the rotor resistance in all three windings in a equal manner so that you would not affect the balance loading condition in the rotor so the rotor will still be balanced so by doing this, 
you can at the startup you can have a high root resistance if you put the uh, uh, startup uh, settings to the high resistance mode so lock root current can be reduced and lock root torque will still be high because of that because of high root resistance and then you can change the speed by varying the external resistors you just step it manually and then this mechanism is ideal for for accelerating high inertia loads because for to accelerate high inertia loads you need high torque in the beginning but then as the high inertia gathers the speed you can reduce the torque little by little in steps so that's the uh, initial part about the three phase induction motors so we discussed about how induction motors works or rotating magnetic field in uh, stator induces currents in rotor which creates another rotating magnetic field that is how the system starts uh, moving operational speed and synchronous speed are related by slip that's another important thing that we discussed and we also covered energy flow in a induction motor how to estimate load and starting current and then the operational characteristics and then changing rotor resistance affects the motor speed torque characteristics that's what we discussed as the last thing thank you